11 and a half hours. You ready, Greg? Uh -oh. Can't see anything, it's too dark. There you are. Kind of the end of the deer tour. We're coming down to the end. We're headed to Georgia. What's today, the 8th yep. of December? Our season opens on the 10th for the public area that we're going to hunt. We're going to drive all night tonight, try to get there sometime tomorrow morning, get some scouting in, you know, find a place to camp, do all that stuff. That should give us the better part of a day to get all of that in order to get in the woods on the 10th. Gonna be hunting with the muzzle loaders too. Gonna go to the mountains, big woods hunting in Georgia. <laughs> He's already got the accent going. Yeah. How was the water fallon gooch? It was good this morning. All of our mallards, five specks, and a banded Canada goose. All on public land. So where can people watch this at? You can watch it on Gucci TV. Off to a good start here. Already delayed and lost about 20 minutes on the ETA. We'll get there eventually. 11 hours and 15 bags of sun chips later. Pulled elk. Go get in a crock pot for a day and pour a gallon of barbecue sauce on it and there you go. Maybe not a gallon, but a lot. Bear, bear, right there. <laughs> Dang it, Greg. That's what about, you get for sleeping on the job. I was thinking about something. Dreaming. Got a map up here. Sign in or check in online at gooutdoorsgeorgia.com or in person at the check station. Primitive. December 10th through December 16th. That's some pretty thick stuff up there. Oh, yeah. There's a rub. Buck rub up there, Gooch. Way up on that ridge there. Oh, it's not a doe rub? Mmm. There's a campsite for it. Wood and everything. Man, that's a That would be an awesome place to be. Yeah, great right next to the creek. There we are. Home sweet home. For some time, anyway. We drove around, we've done a little bit of scouting. Trying to get used to these road systems and whatnot. That's what we say every time we come to a new area. We like to drive around check which roads are closed, which ones are impassable, which ones are walk-in only, which ones you can drive down. So we've just been going around dropping pins on Onyx. Saw a few rubs from the road, a few tracks. It's gonna be a tough hunt, I would say. I agree. Most good things in life don't come easy. <laughs> Wise beyond your years, Gooch. <laughs> Set it up. It's amazing how fast something can take shape. Just like that, we've turned this little parking spot into a home. Y'all ready? Those boys came through it. Yeah. 115, <laughs> revving their truck. It's like, all right, well, it must be time. You know, people are starting to come through. It's probably five o'clock, time to get up. It was 115. <laughs> <laughs> the redneck wake up call from the Georgia boys this morning, Greg. <laughs> That's the type of crap I would have done when I was young. Let's, let's get wild. Thank you for the ride, Goose. We'll see you in a little bit. Yeah, we get hungry from lunch and we'll head back to the lodge when we get cold. <laughs> We weren't set up in too bad of a spot this morning, I don't think. We were just right up on that ridge. There's a fresh bed right here. Pee in it. Fresh track in it. Straight right here behind me. Right here. Yeah, it's old. And then right past that, there's some fresh poop on the ground. Here's the end of the WMA, but on the other side of it is public as well. When you come and hunt Georgia, you need to read up on all the regs, as you do with any state, obviously, but in the south especially they have lots and lots of wmas and each wma has its own set of regulations and own seasons and everything this particular wma we're hunting has a season that's open for a week in december that's primitive weapons only and you can shoot any deer right over there on the next piece of public land that is not the wma it's buck only and it's firearm season until the end of december we could shoot a doe right here but 30 40 yards over there we cannot gotta be a buck which is all right 
We'll take a buck, won't we, Greg? Take anything we can get. We'll Long take anything. Our, our goal on this hunt is to learn as much as we can about these mountain deer and try to harvest one of them. I don't care if it's a doe, a fawn, a buck, anything. Somebody just made the harvest, sounds like, up in there. It's uh, shot number four this morning. Just don't have the feeling we're gonna encounter a lot of hunting pressure on this deal. Yeah, you almost wish maybe there was a little bit more mm -hmm. getting deer up and moving. Just gotta find them. Yep. I mean, we found some. Or if we have, we're finding some. We found trails walking in. I mean, we're finding fresh beds right here. Let's keep going. Let's see what else we can find. side that we can shoot does on <laughs> so when I saw them run in that direction I'm like green light <laughs> but I was free-handed and she was bounding through there at 100 yards I, you know if they were 50 yards closer I would have shot for sure yeah or if I would have been up to this tree where I could have rested my gun I would have shot there's another rub right up there <laughs> I know you ain't gonna see a lot of deer in here no. you're gonna see a couple deer that's about it they're definitely back here oh, yeah. and there's bucks back here for sure yeah, I mean, there's new rubs, old rubs. There's a couple big rubs down in there. A good number of tracks. We obviously just saw that doe and fawn just about shot them. Yeah, we can kill one back in here. Yeah, I think so. How's your morning? It's good. Productive morning for not killing a deer, I think. It's good. I was encouraged by the sign that we found in there. Some of those rubs were pretty big. This particular area does not is not known for big bucks at all. We don't care about score or anything like that, but the WMA record is like 130 some inches. I mean, I don't care what it is. I had to hammer back on that doe and fawn. Just ready for it oh, or what? Man, they were a little far, and Did I didn't have a rest. Did you walk a long ways back there? We were a mile and a half back, probably. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this stuff's a lot steeper than I thought it was going to be. Well, just looking at the map. Couple lines get pretty close in spots. Yeah. Let's go do a little more scouting and see what else we can find. Right into this old boy in the road. He's got his Jeep stuck up here, so we're gonna help him pull it out quick. Oh, there he is. That's gander what we got here. This is some Paris, Missouri type stuff. Look. That's good. You're good, Aaron. Need nothing. I don't need nothing, man. Heck, we just saw you on the way out. Only took you an extra 10 minutes to do it. I walked up and down this road like five times. <laughs> and uh, the guys down at the end of the road, they said they didn't want to bring their trucks back here. I was like, well, I'll just keep walking and see if I can find somebody. Yeah, that wasn't too bad at all. I really appreciate it. You have no idea. No problem. That'd get you out. I didn't know if we was going to do it there for a second. I didn't either. <laughs> I 
Got a little mud on the tires, Greg. Got a little mud on me. Did you? Did I? <laughs> it was flying everywhere. I had, to, I had to crank her pretty good to get him out. He's oh, like, yeah. I had a day off, so I figured I might as well play. <laughs> Georgia, baby. Yeah, man. Somebody there. I think Park. there's a lot of people recreating, too. Yeah, I think so. We saw those people riding horses last night. The old boy was just up in there four-wheeling. It would make sense that this gets hit by lots of just general recreation with all the towns around here. Two dudes standing here watching water filter into a bottle. <laughs> this went down to the creek, filled up the bag, and now we're waiting on her to work. This is pretty handy. We, me and Ted used it a bunch of elk hunting too. When you can camp next to a creek, you can just fill that up every night. Usually you can hang it from a tree or something so that you don't have to stand there like this for 10 minutes and filter water into your, <laughs> into your bottle, but. This is what the interns are here for. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for the slow day, guys. We didn't get into much other than uh, pulling old homeboy out of the mud pit. That was pretty fun. <laughs> but past that, we didn't we didn't see much. Me and Greg did find some good sign this morning and almost shot a doe. We don't have a good wind to hunt that spot in the morning, which stinks because that's kind of where we were banking on going. So we're going to be starting from scratch again tomorrow. We knew this was going to be a challenge coming down here to this specific area. Totally different terrain than we've hunted deer in before. We've hunted turkeys and stuff like this quite a bit, but we haven't hunted deer and we get tons and tons of questions from, you know, the Northeast all the way down to the South. It's like, how do you hunt deer in big woods, especially mountainous terrain? And uh, that's what we're trying to do. We're just trying to learn more about it, see if we can be successful. Uh, Georgia's got such a wide variety of opportunities that you can have. I mean, this WMA is open for seven days, primitive season in December. They've got a buck only rifle hunt in late November. There's a lot of public areas statewide in Georgia that you can hunt with firearms for, you know, a much longer period of time as well. And many of these WMAs have different hunt dates. So if you wanted to, you could just throw your tent in the back of the truck and go and hunt a bunch of these different WMAs in Georgia and just kind of bounce around from season to season. That's the nice thing about these WMAs and the way that they have them set up is it keeps the pressure off the deer. So this morning when we were going in there to hunt, nobody's been in there deer hunting now for almost two weeks since the firearms buck only season. We're from Iowa and we get questions all the time. Why, if you live in Iowa, do you travel to these states that have you know smaller bucks, fewer deer, way more hunters? It's all, it's all the same for the most part to us. I mean, it's just deer hunting. At the end of the day, your your standards may change a little bit from state to state, depending on where you're at. But like Greg just said, we're down here just deer hunting. Like literally, we're going to be so stoked if we just kill a deer. So when I saw those does pop up out of the bottom this morning, I was like, oh, hammer back, boy. I was, I was ready. I was ready to ready to let it go if they would have stopped in the right spot. So we'll, we'll find see. them. We'll find them. We're just we're going to keep trying again tomorrow until we run into one. We just head east into this little drainage here and go clear to the bottom where it's really thick. That's pretty fresh scrape. It's our second morning here in Georgia. We got up a little bit earlier today, headed into a new spot with the saddles and everything. Yesterday, there was nobody at this parking lot, so we just figured we'd give this a try. And since you haven't been able to deer hunt in here since like the 29th of November, these deer have been relatively unpressured for a couple weeks. We're not even halfway back to where I wanted to hunt. We just came across this real big scrape right here, right off the side of this road. I mean, there's a saddle right here in this ridge where deer cross back and forth. I just, it seems like a really, really obvious spot. No, there's no need. 
mean to comment below and tell me that there's lots of different little cases and plastic holders that you can put these things in that make way more sense than a plastic sandwich bag. I'm aware of all these things. I just have not purchased one. Hence the sandwich bag full of primers. Greg and I have seen seven to ten squirrels and heard some turkeys in the distance. We've not seen a deer. We've not heard a deer. So we're going to get down and continue to scout in a little bit further. Like I said originally, we were planning to go in a lot deeper this morning, but we ran into that scrape. We figured we might as well sit it, see what happens. I guess this is kind of a good lesson to point out. This is how we go about hunting pretty much any new public area for the most part. It's like you creep in here to an area you're unfamiliar with, with a spot in mind. And a lot of times you run into sign that you can either pass up or set up on on the way in. But regardless, we're going to mark this on a map, go in a little bit deeper, see if we can get into some more of this thick cover where deer be spending time during the day. Sweet gum. Sweet gum. Sweet gum tree growing into a white oak. Actually grew clear through it. See that? Yeah, the branch coming out the other side. Can't say that I've ever seen anything quite like that. I ain't never seen nothing like it. Look, they both just grew right here. Don't forget my longies here. Got warm on us. 65 today. Had to shed some layers. We just jumped a buck. It's bedded right here below where we set up this morning. We actually set up at the top of that saddle, up in those pines where we found that scrape. And then as we came down the logging road, we found more rubs up there and a couple of really, really fresh rubs. And then as we got further and further away from this spot, the sign did not look as fresh. What little fresh sign, buck sign, we found was right there, and he was bedded right below it. If he was in there while we were on a stand, he was within 100 yards of us. Yeah, he of was. Too. He was right there. I bet you he was in there. We just walked two and a half miles and saw <laughs> one deer right next to where we were set up this morning, though, so that does make me feel a little bit better. We were not set up in a bad spot at all this morning to kill a buck, but he was below it right there at the top of that bowl. Just a perfect spot for him to be. It makes total sense why he's there. We just had to spook him out of there to figure it out. Also learning that the best sign is up in these, best up on the ridges where there's red oaks dropping. Yeah. Close. That was the tree. 100, maybe 100 yards that way. Literally within gun range. Yep. It's good to see him. Yep, you yeah, we're learning. That's the main thing. It's all about. Oh well, let's go back and meet up with Gooch. Cool off a degree. Man, it's a good looking spot right here. Alright, we're gonna head in for the evening. Myself and Mr. Gooch are. Mr. Aaron and I. Looks real excited. He doesn't excited. look excited at all. <clears throat> he looks quite miserable actually. Jesus. He'd much rather be waterfowl hunting this time of the year. <laughs> Which is what he's gonna do when he gets home. We're gonna go in tonight off the side of this big mountain. There's a bunch of uh, little finger ridges that drop down into this bottom. And over on the private side, it looks like some pretty thick cover. So we're gonna get on all these ridges that lead down in there because we can see some oak trees from the road. Hopefully get set up over some acorns to shoot a deer. We're getting our butts kicked, but we gotta keep trying. We'll get one here eventually. We're following a deer trail in right here. And it's really hard to see because of all the leaves. But you can see where their hooves are punching through the leaves. And they're, they're staying on this elevation line right at the head of a lot of these drainages. There's a bunch of acorns back here too. A lot more than what me and Greg saw this morning. Yeah, there's one right there. And this, this one right here is real fresh. Scrape. Yeah. Three or four rubs right here behind us, right behind Gooch. Scrape right here with a bunch of fresh poop in it. I think they're right around the heads of these bowls and stuff. Like right on the other side of this ridge, there's another little yeah. 
ditch. I mean, there'll be deer down in it. There'll be deer coming up, I would think, and deer coming down. There's, they're on these ridges, eating acorns. A bunch of fresh tracks right here. Let's just dive right off of there and just right there. It's not perfect wind if there's deer on past us, but hopefully the thermals will switch and pull them down. Sounds like the thing's about to quit on him. <laughs> well guys, that's gonna do it for her second day here in Georgia. No deer tonight, which I'm very surprised. We could see a long way from this tree. We've got fresh sign right here below us. They gotta be in here. They're just in these hills and in these steep ridges where there's oaks dropping acorns everywhere. I'm sure they can just stand up where they're bedded and feed on acorns and be pretty content and not have to move too far. I don't know what we'll do in the morning. It's supposed to rain tomorrow at some point. We'll either kind of push in deeper to this spot here or maybe go back into one of the other two areas that we've hunted. Definitely on the deer, but having trouble seeing them while we're sitting. This is the fourth time we've sat. We haven't seen a single deer while we're sitting. Every time we see deer, it's when we're moving around. All we can do is keep trying. I think we will get a shot at one here eventually, but it's going to be a game of patience. Ready? 